on this episode of the Roundtable Podcast, we have Colin Masterson, former Villanova strength coach and overall badass going into the private sector. We talk some great training stuff. Danny? Yep, we go from uh, corporate world to uh, training world to private world. It's awesome. Trevon? Yeah, just like if you're into like youth training, um, athlete training, sports training, anything like that, I think you'll definitely take something away from this episode. I think this also hits like on a lot of like, you know, life stuff, like why we do what we do. Just an overall great fucking episode. Yeah, I think this is a, a very good listen for all facets of life. Transitioning, doing what you got to do to get to certain spots. Um this is the kind of content I'm really happy that we give out to our customers and the people that listen because there is value all over the place. Let's mm-hmm. go to the show. <laughs> Roundtable podcast. Right. I'm your boy, Corey G at small arms, Danny at Trey speed in the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak, special guest in the building, Colin Masterson. What's good. Former good. recently, former Villanova strength coach now going to the private sector. And I would say a guy that's listened to a few roundtable podcasts in his day. That's right. And now you're here. Here I am in the so, flesh. Yeah, man. So uh, walking in the gym for the first time this morning, right? Uh, obviously, it's not a competitive day. We're doing arms. A couple of the guys are front squatting yeah. and stuff. But like, shout out. Yeah, just get the get the vibe on uh, coming into the facility and you know, kind of being an outsider slash insider because you work with Treadway and a little bit with Max Effort, but then you know, being here in the flesh. Yeah, I think it's always perspective, right? When People talk about the 4 a.m. Is it a real thing? You know, what do you see when you walk in? Is it like, is the energy there, whatnot? And it's exactly what you guys portray it as, right? Like, people are there. They're hungry. They want to work. You said Friday. It's a little bit more casual. And and Treadway told me that leading. He's like, it's going to be a little more casual on Friday. Guys are still putting on some heavyweight front squatting, right? So (laughs) guys are back squatting. That's still casual. It's funny. (laughs) Yeah. Like, guys are still moving some weight. And obviously, you know, I hopped in, you know, right with the guys we're doing. I've been doing the program. I told you. We've been doing it for about, I don't know, three months now. So I've just hopped right on the program, shifted some things around. But, like, it's the real deal here, man. The energy's real. The music's awesome. Guys got their shirts off. They're flexing. It's juicy on a Friday. So it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, what Trey has been capturing for all these years is extremely accurate of what people see exactly. when they come. And that's the thing, like, uh, that environment. And, and you guys obviously had a good environment at Villanova mm-hmm. because then he had these guys band squatting and stuff. It's fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. So it was cool. It was cool to see you in here this morning for sure. I appreciate you yeah, having cool. me. Yeah, so I want to get into, you know, growing up, I wanted to be a fucking strength coach and Same. stuff like that. So I guess, like, how how did you get into the strength world? Was there someone that you look up to? Was it sports? Or how did you get into the position you're in now? Yeah, well, I didn't even know strength coach was a job because we didn't have one at the D3 level where I played football. So um, for me, I wanted to be a coach of some capacity. I'm not sure what. My, I was uh, talking on a previous podcast. My dad was a coach, so I've always wanted to be a coach. Um, I thought I wanted to be a teacher, so I was going to be a high school teacher and then hopefully same. be the head football Dude, same. Coach. I thought same I was going to be a gym teacher. <laughs> yeah, my, that so was the goal. My ideal job was, at that time, was I just wanted to work out, coach football, and be like the AD, just wear sweatpants and shit like that. Yeah. So, yeah. It's basically the same thing. Yeah, pretty much. Just, <laughs> yeah. yeah, just in a different so way. So we all had the same goal. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all had the yeah. same goal. And then uh, I graduated college and, and had an accounting degree. I went to ah, <laughs> small nice. arms account. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I went for accounting because what is it with all you guys yeah. who want to be accountants? I yeah. like I'm allergic to accounting. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is going on? Well, it was on? business, so that was the most important thing. It was Stability, business. bro. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and there was Jeez. no senior project, so that was the second thing. Uh, so there it is. <laughs> Strategy. Um, after that, I uh, worked a corporate job, and I knew from day one it was terrible. What? Wait, what, yeah, was which, what, what was it? Where? What was it? Uh, I worked for a small engineering firm in a town over from me and I was doing uh, financial analyst work. And it was in a small, about 10 to 12 people company at first. It was all right. Like felt okay. The people were very nice yeah. and trying to learn. And everyone's like, oh man, if you're getting tired of that, like, you got to get to a bigger firm. It'll be good there. You'll meet all these people. You'll love it. First day at the new job was having coffee talk with the guy. I was like, this ain't for me either. So fast forward, I think it was nine months, quit my job, went intern at the University of Maryland for free at 26 um, as a strength coach because the guy I played college football with was a previous intern there and just had gotten a job. So I went down there as an intern, and then fortunately a kid I played high school football against called me. He had gotten a head strength coach job at Villanova as the football strength coach. He was asking oh, wow. me, hey, would you want to come you know, intern for me? So I was like, you know what? Here's an opportunity to come back home. Obviously interning, not making any money a little bit cheaper to move back home. So I, I interned there, got a paid internship, then went on full-time and worked there for five years. But my my goal was always to never do something for more than five years. I want to keep switching up. There's so many things I want to do, build my own brand, build a business. Um, so at this point in time, it's just like, you know what? 
I think I need to go out my own. I kind of have enough of a side hustle that's kind of overtaken mm-hmm. that. Um, so I did it kind of not know I wanted to do it. Loved it when I was in it, but now it's just time to move on to the next thing. Nice. So I've had some things that there are similar blocks, right? They kind of, they overlap each other, mm-hmm. but it's that, it's, it's like seven year ish. I start getting like, all right, well I've built this thing. And now it's time to expand on this part of it. And some of them overlap, some of them go away, whatever. But that's pretty normal, I think. You're like, because you just had it came off of a five-year block of doing that. And it's like you've grown and outgrown it, essentially. Now it's time to see, you know, what's possible. Sure. That's pretty cool. So so I want to go to the Maryland days, like your first start. What was that like? Like, what was going on, like, mentally with, like, I'm leaving my job. I'm going to take this free internship at Maryland. Like most what, people what think that so like? like at 26, right? That's what yeah. you said. Yep. Hey mom, I'm going to quit my job at a engineering firm, which sounds like the most classic fucking yeah. like security thing of all time uh, to go lift weights and work for free. They didn't love it. <laughs> didn't love it. Right. That's your first year off. Trey had a similar too. one of those. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. First year off insurance, but I got down there and immediately I knew like it was a locker room vibe again. The guys I worked with down there um, as strength coaches were awesome. They treated me like family, but I was getting three hot meals a day and I had a place to sleep. So that's everything I needed. That's and true. then from the time I woke up to the time I went to bed, I was having fun with the guys. Like I was coaching people, interacting with people that were like minded. I wanted to be around high performers on the football field, coaches that had been all over the world you know, trying to make these kids better. So that's where I felt at home. And mm. the fact that I was making no money obviously isn't great, but I wasn't losing money either because I had no money coming out of pocket. So I was, just perspective, kinda, bro. I was just staying flat line. I was like, hey, I'm not losing a ton of money. Um, I'm making making do with, with the three meals and a place to sleep, and I'm, and I'm learning every day. That's what Hell I want to yeah. do. I want to learn. So I was learning every day. So that was some early mornings. We'd get in. I mean, God, it was like I was driving from D.C. for a little while. So we get like 3.30, get in by like 4.15. And then you're there till when Brax was over, probably about six thirty with dinner, seven o'clock with dinner. So it's a full full day span because you got morning, afternoon, and and then practice. Um, but I just loved it. And, you know, people ask me all the time, like, why did you do it? Would you do it again? There's like, that may have been the best nine months of my life. Like I had so much fun, learned so much, was around guys that I just love being around, and still have great relationships with this day. That I don't think I have any, you know, from my my time as an accountant that I still talk to those people because we're just not in the same like headspace like i want to go do something they're just happy to kind of be clicking away and getting their Mm -hmm. paycheck you know what's interesting is like obviously this is a a similar story that continues to happen especially with guys in our industry because fitness is most everyone's hobby they think they have to be an accountant or whatever right but then they realize they're never going to be happy but what i'm intrigued by is how many people don't change it you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I mean, this is the this is not the norm. Mm-hmm. Danny's not the norm, right? <laughs> he was still at Nationwide. Mm-hmm. Like the the point is, like, shout out. I know there's shout more out. content based around these things nowadays, <clears throat> but the amount of people that just never t- really took that risk, even though they knew probably just as much. I'm just intrigued by because I've never really operated that way. But that would be frustrating, I think, to not try it. Well, sure. the one thing to underscore you know too saying? is is like it's never too late. That, right? Well, yeah, and most that was going to be my most next point. Most people would say at 26, like, oh, fuck it. That's why I brought that home, up. You know, it, and I was trying not to sound like a dick, but I was getting to that. Is that it isn't too late, and that you sh- you owe it to yourself. Yeah, like we got one good. shot at this thing. Mm-hmm. You know, and you don't know how long you're fucking here. Go fuck it. Let nine months. It was yeah. you had no expectation. No. You're literally like, yeah. do I like this? Do I want to learn? Yeah. I'm back in the locker room. I just think there's a there's a heavy amount of value in that, and every one of these guys took that chance with me, right? To be here, yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Just to see what what what, what can we do? Yeah. What can we do? I, I mean, it's hard for people. I saw to a work. video of uh, Brandon Marshall today. I think he was talking to his little brother. Okay, and he was basically talking about how uh, like you can't let other people in the world that like they're trying to tell you what you need to do and shit like that. Yeah. Like they're projecting their insecurities on you. Like you can't let that shit like slip in. Yeah, you know. No, that's. Uh, I, I I know we were talking about CT, but I think I heard CT say some shit like that about arm training or something one time. Yeah. It was like the same, like basically, you know, when you're out here doing your thing and you're doing it your own way, you, you can't you can't really allow people to infringe on that because they're they're not you. They don't know what you're willing to do. I just remember thinking that real young too, similar. Yeah. So making making that decision to go from the you know engineering place 
to Maryland? Like, was it like instantaneous? You knew right away, or like, was it like, was there like an evaluation process because you had your mom and dad, you know, you know, chirping you or something like that, or did you just like think like, you know, what's the worst that could happen, or, or kind of walk us through that? Yeah, I think it was definitely calculated, and I just had a bunch of conversations with people who had gone and done it, or people who had had their own companies, or, or just doing something they were passionate about, and have those conversations. Like, is it worth and like. Or you can always go back to that job. That job ain't going there anywhere. You go. And that's the biggest thing for me. And, you know, speaking on, I just didn't want to wait to have fun and enjoy every day. Like, I wasn't enjoying my time at work in the corporate setting until I left and then went and coached football. I yeah. was working in the weight room. So I was like, why don't I just make this an everyday thing? So I made an everyday thing. And now I truly enjoy every day. Like you said, you get one shot at this thing, right? And yeah. you don't know when it's going to happen. I actually, in between both podcasts we just did, buddy texted me and said, hey, if friend from high school just died and you know not to make it more but like that shit can happen to me right yeah. that should have any of us so it's like i want to make sure i'm enjoying every day and you know i watch you and you know to come here and, and just what you do day in day out like there is hard work that goes into it but Tons. it's fucking fun yeah, yeah it's fun and you guys get to have fun it's a good environment if you can do that every day your life's gonna be so much better than if you're like hey by five o'clock on a friday i can start having fun and doing what i want to do there's hard dumb shit in every job mm -hmm. so if you can have less of that because you're doing something you like and working with people you like then I'm, you know it just makes i just think it makes life like way more enjoyable yeah. in general they say pick your heart so you pick your heart yeah 100 percent. whoa pick your heart no oh, that's, oh. that's what she said oh. Oh. Hey. Wow. Wow. all right yeah. we'll transition trey your turn yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth. Yeah, yeah that was a nice. great transition, Corey. Yeah. Great way to run the podcast. <laughs> Go ahead, Trey. Um, so I was curious, like, on your transition then from, uh, from like, Maryland then to Vanderbilt. Uh, Villanova. 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 No, I love that. Close. Yeah, my bad. Still a no. V. <laughs> that throw, that no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Danny's throwing it off. Yeah. Hey, Danny we, it we off. were back-to-back -back strength guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, you know, it was an interesting shift. It's like, obviously, being the power five, there's just more resources for what they've had. And I was, you know, an intern, but those guys didn't treat me like an intern. I was legit a coach. I was coaching on the floor as much as having the intern duties. But then now when I transitioned to Villanova and I started actually working, I was there the first week. They actually played Temple that week. And I come into them. I don't know fucking anybody. I had yeah. no, nobody uh, on the team. And we win the game. The coach is like, all right, like, we're staying down here. We're going to Xfinity Live. It's just like a bar down in Philly. You guys are taking the team home. I don't fucking know anyone, right? So it's like <laughs> yeah. I'm the guy in charge now. So I went from an intern last week to the guy who's now in charge of the bus and control these guys on a team. And you don't so, even know anybody's so name. I don't know. So you were the head coach. But basically. You yeah. would have or, or, or the head strength coach. Yeah. We, well, I, well the other, there's three buses. So okay. each of the strength coaches on a bus. So basically gotcha. we're running the show, Yeah. which is kind of interesting. So in a quick week, it's like you kind of get all this um, – thrown on top of you it's like well, you got to learn how to adapt and you don't always get that in the corporate setting. it's like oh you ready for this task it's like hey this is your task go figure it out and that's kind of how the sports world works so for me i want to be a football strength coach i came to villanova worked with football originally um did about two and a half years with football and then took a step back i just took on some more teams i was working with four teams and didn't just have the time for it so in the summer i worked with them but throughout the course of a year i wasn't working with them and that exposure for me is allowed to me to like open up my own brand and working in the space with uh, lacrosse and, and golf, which I'm trying to really make a big impact in. Um, and I would have never thought I'd want to do that kind of stuff. I thought it was like football is my sport, but now that I've worked with all these different teams. I have all these different backgrounds of the kids I've worked with. Um, it's a much bigger demographic, and it pays a lot better. right? I'll be honest with you, it pays a lot better because the football kids don't have a ton of money for the training. But lacrosse and golf kids, <laughs> their parents do. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's a, it's a rich person sport, <laughs> yeah. both of them. The, uh, it's funny that you kind of say that like – you think football, I think every person originally, unless they're really segmented, think football, right? Because that's mm -hmm. the strength coaches you mostly know. Right. And those are the bigger programs. And I, I know, but I love being at the ballpark. Now, I won't sit and watch a baseball game, which I don't know a lot of people that do that anyway because it's, so, it's a slower yeah. game, right? But I love being at the ballpark, whether it's my younger son, AG, or actually pro games. And so then I've felt myself float towards baseball. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I find myself wanting to do extra research on it. I'm excited about it. I'm talking to – like, it's it's funny how – but I originally thought the same thing. Yeah. And there is – because the hooting and hollering football, I think, just always fucking yeah. gets excited, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. I'm sure you had plenty of that. But uh, I've found myself kind of float that direction. And that's the sport I quit when I was, like, a freshman because I hated the coach and all. Yeah, I got one of them stories. But the reality is, like, it was probably the sport I was actually the best at. Yeah. And it's the one I had probably the most affection with past basketball. I thought I was going to the NBA. Didn't happen. <laughs> 
I averaged two a game. I started to realize that <laughs> yeah. by my junior year. But either way, like I, I feel myself as a, even as an older trainer, like I'm I'm, I'm floating that way, and, and I and enjoy it. There's a lot of similarities, right? In yeah. the sports, and we talked about this earlier. It's like every sport, as much people want to say, it's so specific with certain things. Like there's a lot of similarities yeah. between these sports. So the general part of the training for a lot of these teams is very general, right? We're just trying to get them moving, and then the training age for a lot of these teams, especially more on the female side, they don't have a huge training age coming from the high school level. Some of them do. So a lot of it's just general training. And then as the season goes, we get more specific as their sport gets more specific. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So how did you like balance, I guess, managing these teams, but also like making sure each individual player is doing like what they need to do? That's, I mean, it's, I would be lying if I said each kid had their own program because they don't, right? Like, so teams have specific programs and then, you know, throughout the course of, hey, if I'm a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, like, I may make the, some things more specific to them because their training age is higher. But for the most part, a lot of the freshmen and sophomores that come in, like, they can't handle a lot of, like, the training that we'd be doing. So they have to be very general for them, movement pattern-wise, yep. volume-wise, sets and rep-wise, like, density-wise within the workout. Like, if we do too much for those kids, we're going to tax them. They can't recover from it because they've never done it before. So it's very general in the beginning. And then as the kids start to earn it, right, we can get more specific with it. And that's when it gets fun. But realistically, for me and my teams, like, with softball as a team who I spent the most time with, realistically, I would say week 12 to about week 18 is when we got more specific, specific. For the most part, a lot of it's general, um, you know, 90, maybe 85% of the time. Yeah. And I think that's uh, an interesting point because if I'm just making them stronger humans who move better and I'm – and I'm, I've got to be hitting that 85 or 90 percent. The 10 percent I still need to learn. I'm going to figure it out, and I'm going to go to big programs to figure it out. But it's like that's why when people are like, "Well, it's not that specific to baseball," I'm like, "Well, I don't know. The bat velo is up 10 mile an hour." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't say we're doing this for bat velo. I said if you front squat 315 like the bar's empty. I bet your bat velo is going to go up. We got a kid who's on the pro- <laughs> a golfer on the program, so he does the golf program that we do. But he also does your program. Yeah. So he comes and lifts with us extra. I mean, I think his club head speed and golf's up like six miles an hour. Yeah. Exactly. There's got to be like a correlation <laughs> in every sport of like having bigger arms. Yeah. Means like bigger bombs. <laughs> you know? Facts. I don't see how it can't, bro. It's like Jose Canseco. Be, yeah, There's yeah, got to exactly. be a correlation Shout between out. like trap yeah. size, <laughs> yeah. neck size, and arm <laughs> size. Quad size too. Quad size. Yeah. So if you if you're elite at those, you're probably a you're savage elite. of an athlete. Well, Seriously, quads? Saquon Barkley, like <laughs> Come Zach Bourne. I mean, yeah. I remember my real good kid that's a sophomore. He's like, he looks up to Mike Trout. Mike Trout sure as hell ain't fucking small. Mm-hmm. He's yoked up. Yoked as a motherfucker. I bet he does arms. 100%. Yeah, you know what I mean? And so they're looking at guys like that thinking, and what they started to realize, Colin, is that the ball that they're barely getting to is now going as far as a good hit mm-hmm. because the strength mm-hmm. is the absolute strength, right? Is just right. higher. Mm-hmm. And so I've tried to like get this through. I think the problem is, is that we're a powerlifting team and I'm a, you know, a 181 powerlifter. So that's what they see. They don't realize the transition of when these kids get super proficient in, you know, the main lifts and the, in the crossover it's in, especially with the bands. Right. And that's the thing. Like I had two guys that play triple A that said they have never broken this many uh, PRs in the off season. Yeah. They feel like fucking beasts. And they know that they're different because of that in the GPP. Yeah. And, and it's like, yeah. so I don't know. I'm, I'm going to make a push to try to make that stuff like. And we had a general conversation, mm-hmm. myself and uh, Brendan Miller, who I work with, and he's been following you for years. Is like, what is the program? Which like, is it a powerlifting program? But there's so much that's involved in the program. Yeah. Is it a squat every day program? Right. Is it a high low program? Mm-hmm. Is it uh, a West side? Right. Like there's well, so it has much components that, all over the right, place. There's yeah. components all over the place. So, so much of it portrays to sport, right? You have exactly. the speed bench day, right? The speed squat day. There's so much involved that you're hitting all these parts of the force velocity curve, force velocity curve that you check a ton of the boxes. I know. So when people are like, oh, I try to explain that to motherfuckers. Yeah, they get be careful. <laughs> like it's a powerlifting one. It's like, well, I am fucking strong, but like I, I'm also fast and I'm also jumping higher too so there's a lot of components of sport that are involved in when I well. added that Thursday with the athlete edition essentially where we had a true dynamic day mm-hmm. where it was front squats with speed right and it was jumping and it was cleans that really then made that even more so yeah. right and I think that now that I've kind of got that gathered and, and to your point it's like I took this piece that I learned at West Side. I took this piece I learned from John Bros, Serrano Arnold even with the volume like all of this stuff mm-hmm. is just a big melting pot of then and then on top of it, it's the practical application between all of us right you know what I mean because 
even Danny with doing his Olympic background, Trayvon being the track guy. He was doing a lot of West Side principles before he got here. Cold being a juicy football Dude, high school was guy. Sort of doing the fucking bodybuilding workout. <laughs> yeah, was, and he got strong, as, strong fuck. as fuck. And we were good. Too. He were doing the volume workouts. They were. It wasn't even sports dude, specific at all. Dude, <laughs> we so we weren't Twitter workouts we, in high school. We definitely Twitter weren't workouts. the most athletic team, yeah. but we were doing basically these high fucking superset squat shit like that. They were yoked up, dude. There wasn't a single player on the offense who couldn't bench two twenty five. Even our third string running back was benching two twenty five. There you go. Our entire <laughs> offensive line was benching over three hundred. Yeah. Like in in D seven, dude, we were some dogs. Yeah, next sizes were huge. It was awesome, <laughs> and that and that's so that's my point. Like when I see high school kids moving weights that grown men struggle with easily, mm-hmm. and I'm like that that comfort under the bar, that confidence. The bands have taught these kids. I think even policed a lot of their form. So my my whole thing with this, and you might be able to help with this because you it sounds like you believe in it, is like to get there to be more of a mass adoption to it. Like I want, and that's what I'm working on. A whole fucking team in the off season to do a band wave. The whole fucking team. Yeah. Like that would be amazing to see. And I need to talk to Jake Miller because maybe we could even have OU tried or something. It's like, could we have everyone front squat for three weeks yeah. and just run a band wave at the front of the workout? Like it shouldn't be that difficult to get. But it's like it's so funny. There's a lot of coaches that will do it, but then to get it transitioned to adoption to the actual players, I haven't seen that yet. But I, but yet is my. I, you know I mean, what I mean? There's value there, right? Yeah. And there's going to be – I wouldn't be surprised to see football teams that are teaching kids that, hey, we're going to go to a band wave, right? Yes. One, two, three. They need whatever. to. Just to teach how to front squat, right? I agree Getting that. that positioning. And then obviously how to finish a lift. A lot of these guys, they'll dump weight because they can't finish a lift. Which the band bracing, man. Just you. bracing. So a lot of that stuff obviously applies. It is hard with the adoption, I think, for a full team. But there's going to be some team that doesn't. There's going to be some team that the numbers go way up. Yeah. And then once that happens, I think the transition will be super easy. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Uh, back to Danny. Back to me. Okay. Um, small. The smallest of the <laughs> small. Yeah. Well, I was going to Good comment one. too, like Thank on you. the first. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Can I get a pick? <laughs> <laughs> um, look at this. Look at your fucking outfit. Yeah, it's well, amazing. Let's, let's address yeah, that for a minute. So, so listen. Did you wake up and premeditate this? Or what? I woke <laughs> up and this excellence today. today. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So this is what happened, Daddy. You want me to break this down real quick? Yeah, please. So I came back from the workout, and I was just, you know, I had a pretty long week. I was just getting a little pump, you know. How many curls did you do today? I, I, I actually, I spent a lot of time on the preacher curl today. I did. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. So you saw that. Um, so you know, I got out of here and I hit my lunges and stuff, and I was like, you know, I think I've been growing my hair out because I had it shaved all the way up, so it was like a tennis ball on the one side for mm-hmm. a little while. Is, and it was like, I was like, I just got it trimmed up this week. And I was like, the Afro is like getting close. There it is. Trey's been looking real nice out here at his. And so I've been inspired. And so I was like, you know, today might be the day to get out. It's, a, it's snowing out, but it's not super cold. So I could rock the this this new vintage Rolls Royce jacket I got yeah. the whole time. And then I got the these time. bad boys when I was in New York. Oh, I would yeah. wear these pants every day. And I was like, you know what? Cole inspired me because I've been seeing the gold off and on a little bit more with him too. Mm-hmm. Hair was right, and I was like, "Today's just today. I got double podcast. I'm trying to hit fucking Longhorns." Yeah, Longhorns. <laughs> <laughs> I told uh, I told him that the only thing he's missing. I knew, talking, I, he's I knew, about you, that earlier I knew too. you'd like that trend, earlier, so I said it. Like, oh, yeah, Longhorns. Yeah. yeah, dude, like you're on a Longhorn steakhouse. Yes, dude, Longhorns is shit. That's dude. what I'm saying. My favorite place. Listen. That's what I'm saying. Rachel acts like she's too bougie for it. I'm like, well, I'm going by my fucking self. Yeah, dude, me and Mikhail, like Mikhail yeah. loves long time. Yeah, fuck it. I'm, it's I'm awesome, in with you, dude. bro. Hell yeah. Get in there. I'm telling you, that's just, that's the shit. It's anyway, like, so yeah. I'm looking at like I drop about 15 more pounds, get a tan. Oh, yeah. This shit is a wrap, bro. Nice. I so I said I said the only thing he's missing with this fit is like he needs like Gucci a, clone. A, a, like a strong <laughs> sense of Gucci cologne that as soon as he walks through the door, it's like it's absurd how yeah, fucking yeah. much it smells. That's how AG bro. smells all the fucking time. He's yeah. like using. Some, I'm like, dude. I wonder why. You should take a shower, bro. That's what you need to do. He's like, I'm like anyway. All right, where we go from there? One thing on his mind. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um. Yeah. So I was gonna talk about. Uh, <laughs> why don't you like compare and contrast some of the stuff you learned between Maryland. To Villanova, or like, what are some of the few like key things that kind of stick out to you? Um, being in like you know purely football, right, and then going from football into like lacrosse and golf and stuff like that. I think there's a there's more similarities than what people think. Like I said, the the resources are the biggest difference. Like at that Power Five level, you have so many resources that the kids are getting meals three times a day. 
right? They have like some fitness tracking. They probably have some sort of Sparta that's training or testing out like, hey, do they have imbalances in their hands? Like, we don't have that stuff. Um, so Villanova, I think it's more of an education-based system. And they do that stuff at the Division One level, but they don't get as much time with them. It's like mm-hmm. they, they have that time, but it's like we're trying to produce athletes. And if a kid gets hurt, it's kind of like the next kid up. But like for us, we don't have that luxury. So we need to educate our athletes. I, I, I'm saying – our athletes are only here for 16 week semester and then another 16 week semester and after that they're home for they were just home for almost a seven week break mm. for christmas and they go home for another eight or nine weeks sometimes in the summer it's a long time and a lot of your performance kids, could go yeah, yeah a like lot of seven these kids are, are just working internships and a lot of them want to go to new york and they want to do um like private equity training and they're trading and stuff like that. it's like you're putting in 12 13 hour days in the yeah. summer right there's no shot you're training so if we can just educate the kids um on on what they should be doing in that time off. It's like, hey, you might not be able to get to the weight room four days a week. Can you do two? Can we get our two major strength days in to educate you about, like, hey, if you come back at this point, we can then as a team progress. But if you do nothing for seven weeks, well, we got to start over again, <laughs> right? right? No, I mean, zero. basically, we're just going on the same hamster wheel over and over again. Mm-hmm. So I would say the biggest difference is just it's resources. We don't have the same amount of coaches. They obviously have the power five level, which allows them to have more hands-on, get a little bit more specific, and then they can kind of run a little bit more of an advanced system mm-hmm. just because they have so much time and availability with the kids that we don't really have at yeah. this level. Did you, when you were at Maryland, uh, did you run in the Sean Merriman at all? Because I know he, he went to Maryland. He's around a decent amount. I just wondered if he I did, did it. randomly. Uh, Vernon Davis was there a couple okay. times. He's a beast freak, too, yeah. Freak. Sean was like yeah. the first one I trained with when I was at MP where I realized like the heavy separation between me and a like professional linebacker. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like – I was it because he was so athletic too. Yeah. I was in fucking shock when freaks. I was lifting with him. It was unbelievable. Absolute freaks. And I was like, "This is why I'm not in the league." Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. All right, uh, back to you, Trayvon. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you you mentioned that you were a high school uh, football coach. So I'm curious, like, what kind of resources you used, like, for then like strength training, like with your kids and stuff like that. And then what kind of resources then you used, and like what resources then you took and like progressed on them and stuff like that. And you still use today. Yeah. I mean, when I was doing the high school strength coach, I'd be lying if I told you I had all the answers. Like I was just throwing shit at the wall and hoping it stuck. I thought I was doing what I was doing, but <laughs> I, I, I didn't, right? So I probably screwed up more than I should have. But now I actually went back to my high school a couple of weeks ago and, and then helping them with their programming. And same resource they've had when I was there. They don't have much, right? They got a little bit of a nicer weight room, but they don't have much. So I've implemented with them a lot of the sprinting and jumping work that they can do with minimal equipment. So they don't need anything, right? You can go out in the field and sprint. You can sprint in the hallway in the school. If they can do that in the off season and in the in season, it's going to help them overall just get stronger, be healthier, stuff like that. So that's the biggest thing I've implemented. And I've tried to teach them a little bit like the high-low system, but it might be a little bit much for those guys right now. But if they can just learn how to sprint and jump, that's going to take them a long way for a lot of these kids just as they introduce themselves into some of the strength training. How how big was your high school? I think I graduated with like 700 kids. So it was that's 700 kids in my grade. Was there uh, – so I'm just curious because I played at a D7 school here where uh, – um, like we had like 50 kids on our entire football team. So we were always playing like both ways. Is that how your like high school was? Yeah, we, too? Were, we were called dog soldiers at our high school. So <laughs> yeah. uh, kids went both yeah, ways. Okay. I love that. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to steal that one. Kids went <laughs> both ways. Um, I was a quarterback in high he school. He knew as soon as he said it. Yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was a quarterback in high school. So I was one of the few, ca- few guys that didn't go both ways. And there's really one school – within our league that they kind of – they call it two platoon where they have 11 guys, one side of the ball, 11 side of the other. Yep. And it actually is crazy. Every year they win, but you obviously probably win because your guys are fresher. Yeah. Right? They're taking less hits, yeah. less volume. So, like, it works for them. But I always argue sometimes, like, your best athletes aren't on the field. So, which way do you yeah. go? Mm. Well, I'm just curious because, you know, I think training for a team that plays both sides of the ball, like, what are some of the things that – obviously, like, I only played one game where I only played one side of the ball – and it was a completely fucking different experience. Did it feel different? Cool. Oh, my gosh, dude. It felt like the entire game was the first quarter. Uh, where, like, I was playing every fucking snap. Kickoff, kick, return, punt. Like, everything. For sure. Never came off the field. <laughs> and that that was, like, fucking draining. Hell, yeah. It was it draining. It's like, after, like, sometimes in the third quarter, you're like, holy fuck, I've just been running the entire time. I did that, like, in the lower ages, but it was so long ago, I can't really remember. But I never, obviously, did that in high school. So, yeah, yeah that. And, like, but the thing was, like, our coaches wanted to basically run us into the ground mm. all the time. Like, they wanted to make sure we were conditioned enough to sustain it. But most of the time, it felt like they were just fucking running us into the dirt. So, yeah. like, what, I guess, like, what are some of the things that you would uh, 
like tweak with your team to make sure those guys who are playing double sides of the ball are fresh. Yeah, I think it, from your standpoint, and it obviously it was a handful of years ago, it's just a lack of education at the coaching level. Every coach does it their way because that's how they were taught, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But so much has changed in the past, I would say, 10, 15 years of high school sports and college sports, and, and the really good ones are, stri- are starting to implement some of that sports science and just understand, hey, what is the total volume of a game? What kind of numbers would be hit? It's not, hey, just get on the line, we're going to run 20 sprints because 20 is the number I picked, right? You said they're probably doing more <laughs> damage to your team than they were doing good. So if anything, I would say for these coaches, if there's some way to either just track plays, you know, X, Y, and Z, and try and get some sort of volume on the kids and just cut back. So if you're going to lift during the week, whatever your lifting schedule would be, say you play on a Friday nights, so you're probably doing some sort of Monday, Wednesday lift. Like Wednesday should be more of a primer, make sure the guys are feeling really fresh head into that game for a Friday because you're going to play both sides of the ball. You're going to have a huge increase or spike in load. And then, honestly, Monday would be, or Sunday would be an off day. Monday we try and hit the weights pretty heavy. It's the longest away from um, our game. And then Wednesday would be the same thing again, hit a little bit of a primer. That's good. Yeah, because yeah. that that is a, with football, it's because you know you're playing on Friday or Saturday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That should be relatively easy to manage. Yeah. Baseball, they play during the week. <sighs> Um, but the track did you run during the week too, Trey? Um, sometimes there's like meets on like Tuesdays or Thursdays. Yeah, so, so that like would be in it. Yeah, a little random sometimes. Yeah, so with baseball, that's where if AG's a starter and he throws on a Monday, he might throw again Friday or he might yeah. not throw again until the following week. But then like with position players, and that's why I'm trying to help them. And coach, shout out Coach Burr for the Pirates. He's he's helped me with that too. Yeah. So it's like trying to help the high school team like because they got weak last year. At least my guys did because yeah. they it wasn't wound into the program. Sure. Where this year I'm trying to make sure that that is something I'm like, yo, no, 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 no. There has to be still like, you know, a strong lower body day earlier in the week if they're not playing. And then some type of GPP often with, you know, one dynamic of some sort. Yeah. It just like it got away from too much last That's year. That's how we did it at Villanova because we do Tuesday, Thursday lifts. Sometimes they play a midweek, but it was kind of out of conference. So the coach, obviously she wants to win, but she's like, I don't really fucking care if we're going to lose that game. The conference games matter. Yeah. We'd go play Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We'd hit a primer on a Thursday where we'd hit, you know, dynamic effort deadlift, some okay. jumps, throw some med balls, shut it down, do a bunch of recovery, make sure they're fresh for the weekend. Um, but that's right on, that's right on top stuff. of it, bro. Yeah. That's the same shit I'm doing. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah. So I'm curious now, like with you starting like your whole like business venture, like we have like a lot of personal trainers who probably they might be training some like small sports groups and stuff like that. So I'm interested to know, like, how are you structuring like that business? Like, are you still working like with these teams on like a consultant basis or like what's that like? So that's my goal. My goal is to eventually consult with teams and, and discuss with them. Hey, this is the model that you should be running for ideal sports performance. Um, and it'll be definitely a conversion that'll be tough to have some of these conversations because if you look at these club teams and the ones I want to work with is, I mean, they're every weekend they have tournaments, right? And that's outside of their school teams that are playing on. Wow. And the parents are like, I-, I need my kid to go to <coughs> X, Y, and Z school. They need to get a Division One scholarship. You're putting so much extra stress on them. They want to work with me as a trainer. Then they want to have a skills coach. They want to have a shooting coach. They have yeah, all these different coaches. So much. And my biggest thing to them, and it's probably taking money out of my pocket, but hopefully in the long term we have a long relationship, two, four years, we're working together, that the money ends up coming back. But I tell them, like, if you're going to work with me, it's going to be me, right? We're not going to do three different coaches where you see me on Monday, someone else on Wednesday, someone else on Friday. I want you to do less. When's your off day? I had a couple high school girls. They were waking up before school doing shooting stuff. Then they'd play soccer after school. Then they'd go to shooting at night. One of the girls ended up getting hurt, and I was like, I'm not, like, shocked, right? She was doing yeah. so much. And kids can recover, right, at that younger age. But as you start to get older, it's really, really hard. And, then you know, it's going to happen. And you've seen more injuries in um, – the youth age group now, like youth, middle school, high school. It's because all, all the travel stuff, dude. It's, it's a, they yeah. nonstop. Yeah, it's just it's overkill. And parents <coughs> will go all over the place. Like it's West Coast. It's down south. It's, you know, driving four to six hours. Like I took a seven-hour drive yesterday up here. That took a toll on me, right? Yeah. Imagine I had to go play three games and try and perform in front of all these coaches and want to be my best and you have a bad weekend. Well, guess what? You got to do it again next weekend. Like it's, all, it's a lot of stress for these kids. So mm-hmm. I just try and educate them like, hey, if we're going to do this, this is a plan that should work for you. Let's try and put a schedule together. Um, so hopefully we can have some long-term athletic development because that's the ultimate goal is set you up for when you get to college, you're not burnt out, and we can have a su- successful college career. And between that and having some referrals from that standpoint, hopefully I can get more and more clients. My kid's going to have to be a, an outlier to do all that. Like they would yeah. want they it would have to be their stud and they want it. That's the only way you're getting me to drive seven hours 
on a Saturday. That's half the battle. Some of the kids don't <clears throat> want to do it. Yeah. Their parents. Hell no, they don't want to do it. I've seen it. Yeah. Uh, they they would have to be really really good and on top of it want to get better. Yeah. I mean, it, I I think that maybe if somebody's borderline, you might lose them incrementally getting better. But that does that. I don't know if that's going to be the determining factor between them going to the league or not. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what I think most of these parents think, though. Oh, yeah. Did you have you ran into a lot of parents that like? I'm sure, I already know the answer, but I'm asking the question anyway. Uh, that want it more than they want it, and like, or they're so living through them, or they weren't even a good athlete. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like my kid, Alex, especially much better than I was at baseball. You know what I mean? So I was like, oh man, you know, you want to play college ball? Like, you know, maybe D three, D two. Nope, no interest. I'm yeah. thinking to myself, AG, I know you can play. He can spin it. Yeah, no interest. Yeah. And I, and I can I personally, Corey can identify with that, but it's his life, not my life. Sure. And so, you know, that was like a realization I had to have with myself. Yeah. And so it's like, but in, so, but some of these parents ain't hearing it, bro. No, it's gotta be, especially it, when they got cash yeah, too. It's a tough pill to swallow and, and cash gets you far. It can get you into those schools and all those teams. It's like, hey, why is my kid not playing? Well, they're not good enough, right? <laughs> if we're being honest, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a, a conversation that needs to be had too. You, yeah. Your kid's not that good. We can get them better, but, I mean, their ceiling are some kids' floors. Like, that's just, Correct. That just is what it is. With no work. That's a humbling experience, I'm sure. I'm not a parent, but I'm sure if my kid is one of those kids, like, hey, it, it is what it is. You're going through it, right? You're you're real about the whole situation. Yeah. And I think just some parents need to be real. It's like, hey, you can have all the cash in the world if you want. If your kid's not that athletic – they might just not be suited for the sport. They can still play, have fun, but they're not going to be the ones scoring the winning goal all the time. That's okay. If they want to be along for the ride, be a great teammate, be along for the ride. That's a great journey too. I didn't get extra coaching until it was asked. Yeah. Meaning like, hey, dad, you know what? I think I'm, I think I got a knack for pitching. I, I would like to get a little better at yeah. it. All right, cool. Let's get an extra guy for a half hour a week. And then that progressed. But that I tried to like balance that because I know how crazy I am. Yeah. And I know how much I wanted that. Like, you know, when, uh, cause I knew Trey out of high school, Trey gets recruited to go to Akron. Like I, I wanted to get recruited to play somewhere so fucking bad, yeah. you know what I mean? But it just never happened. It wasn't in my cards. So it was like one of those things where I was trying not to put that onto my kids It's tough though, because you want it, but you want it for them, but you really want it for yourself. So that's a tricky one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that that kind of leads into another question I was going to ask is like, what kind of, uh, are some of the biggest challenges that you've encountered since you've entered the strength and conditioning world or like. Or, like, what would you change? Which I think is kind of leading to why you are branching out, right? Yeah, I think in the college world, you know, it's honestly, it's just like an ego contest sometimes. Like, my program is better than your program. What we do is better than you do. is like, you have no idea what I'm doing, right? You may see a small glimpse of what we do <laughs> on a Thursday. You're like, oh, that's the training they do, and they stink. It's like, you, you don't know what part of the plan we're in. You don't know yeah. what, where we are in the year. You don't know what that athlete's been doing. You're talking from, uh, like, coaches to coaches yeah, like yeah. within, within yeah, the yeah. school? So okay. I'm talking coach to coach right now. Contest. Yeah, yeah that's, I mean, that's exactly what it is. Um, and I wish I wish the field would switch a little bit. And I think there there's obviously good people in the field that, you know, are going out and, and you know, seeking help. Or, mm. hey, when they go somewhere, like, hey, I've done this in my program. I think this could help you guys out. Would you ever yes. you know, consider trying it? Rather than be like, oh, this guy does this on a Tuesday. Their team sucks. Like, he must be a terrible strength coach. But talk about <laughs> what team he's at or what, what school he's at. He may be working with 12 teams. You think yeah. he's writing individualized programs for every <laughs> team? Just forget no. about it. He doesn't have time for it. So at that Division One Power 5 level where a lot of those have – they have the platform to speak on it, um, there's some really good training. There's probably some really bad training. And, you know, who's, who's the one to point the finger and be like, hey, that's bad training, that's good training. No one knows what they're doing. We're all just trying to figure it out. It really is just trial and error out there. Yeah. The ego in the strength training world is really difficult. Mm -hmm. And there's pockets of guys that are just impossible. And then there's – and I understand that you want to plant your flag because you believe what you do works. So I get that because I feel the same yeah. way, right? But I think where it gets weird is when you believe there's, like, not parts that you could get better at. Like yeah. that or it's more than just, one way. Yeah, yeah, I'm constantly trying to pick up stuff that I can add or subtract. So that's, I think, where I have the problem. I, I'm cool on uh, you believe your way works 100% because I believe my way works, sure. but I'm still improving my way too. Yeah. So whenever you just all of a sudden go, well, that guy probably, I don't know, I have problems with that part. Yeah. I think that's the, that's the part, the defense of your system, I don't have a problem with that. But like to think that it's like just complete all the way. We just watched, uh, I sent out to our group a podcast with George Halbert, who's like a legendary bench pressure from Westside. 
he said they changed shit constantly. And yeah. Louis changed it constantly. Like yeah. it always evolved. Everyone has to evolve. And that's what we're finding. We're trying a new thing on this next wave. Like it's just what it is. So that's the problem I think I have. That's what I have the problem with the most. Yeah. But yeah. that's a lot of it though. Yeah. For it's, sure. It's and you're seeing it in the private sector too with, with the platforms of like, you know, what is the best program out there? Like, hey, you should be doing, you know, the 30 pound shred. My program's the best. Well, no, my program's the best. Like, no one has the best program, right? Mm -hmm. If you're not getting people that are committed to the program, like, no program's going to fucking work. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. What so. diet works the best? The one you fucking right? follow. Yep. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's why I'm attracted to the program Corey does because. I relate more with like the grittiness that you guys have, the mm -hmm. consistency, the you know the the metal weights in there that make the noise that I like. Like mm -hmm. I, I relate to that because that's yeah. what I like. Some people like the shiny gyms that are a little bit you know cuter, a little bit softer on the edges, and you go into your weights, you sit down between, have a couple you know a cup of coffee and tweet something. Like, and you're like right that's now, for them, and that's you're writing great. out like what sixty nine percent of my max yeah. is going to be to do <laughs> yeah. for the day for yeah. six point nine RP for six RP, sets of three. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah six <laughs> sets of nine. That's just not for me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that may be for them. Yeah, that's and now now we're on the opposite because now we're making fun of those guys. I feel bad, but <laughs> agreed. There, I think part of it is um, that's why the segments are the way they are, right? Because yeah. you're attracted to that environment, right? Because I think if we, the reality is that's where the environment, that's where the roots are from. Right. It. it turned into all these little cute places, but I go back to when I went to Ohio State baseball and I spoke there. They have the cute weight room, which everyone, they take the recruits, and then they got the one that's underneath the fucking stadium in the boiler room that has six racks, which is where Schlegel used to squat at. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, oh, this is where you guys are actually getting strong at. Mm -hmm. So I was on, actually on a Twitter thread the other day going back and forth that I would argue that most programs, no matter how much money they got, need a spot like that oh, yeah. additionally. That a guy like you yeah. can go, you, you, you all need to get better. We're in the fucking boiler room on Tuesdays, front squad. Like, I feel like there could be a grittiness that uh, I understand the recruiting thing. I understand sure. the big gyms, but I feel like that's a piece that we're <laughs> list. I feel like I'm trying to hold the flag for that piece um, w by what we do because most gyms like mine and Dustin's don't make enough money to survive Yeah, because they don't have the setup that we got. We are able to kind of carry this flag because this that isn't our main business. Right. That is our hobby. That is our fucking passion that we've made an international thing. Right. But the reality is if I was just paying my bills on memberships, at old school gym, we'd be struggling out here. <laughs> well, we don't have membership now, but you yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like the, but the reality is that gym never made money, yeah. which is why they don't survive. So it kind of sucks, but that's also preserving why we all originally liked the weights. Joe gold, hardcore seventies, all these, you know, so it's like, it's a little frustrating that that's still not as popular. And I think there's pockets of it all over the U S but I don't know, man, it's, it's yeah. a struggle. Yeah. And even go back to the college setting it, you know, I always say kind of like, you know, fuck the program. It's, it's not about you, right. Yeah. It's about the kids w without the kids. I don't have a job. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't have a job. So I think a lot of people are like, this is my program. I've made, you know, 40 kids go to the pros. It's like, well, guess what? If they weren't there, you wouldn't have a job. There you go. So make it about the kids. That's good. Back to you, Trayvon. Um, so I'm curious, like now, like as you move on, like what is something that you want to do to like kind of like separate yourself then like in kind of like this business field? Yeah, I, I really just want to put out like really good training and create a great client journey within, you know, my clients that I'm working with. And if I'm able to create a team underneath me, I want those people to do the same thing. So when a kid subscribes to work under my program, they understand what the program's all about. They understand the emphasis of each day, so the education base behind it. And I also want them to be able to tell people like, hey, I'm doing this program because you know, of X, Y, and Z, it fits my mold for what I'm trying to do. So I wanna help a lot of the youth uh, community, so little middle school, high school kids that are just getting into uh, strength and conditioning. I don't want them to be fearful to be like, uh, do I have to back squat today? It's like, no, th there's some foundational moves that we can get you to progress and regress to where you are within the program. So I think if you can serve that community, I mean, it's the biggest population out yeah. there, right? Youth sports. Um, if you can serve the youth sports, I think there's going to be a way where it kind of trickles up with them. Like, hey, I've been doing this program for five, six, seven years now. This has always worked for me. I'm going to stick with this program. So I think really good training and creating a really good client journey for the ones who kind of join your program. If it gets big enough, hopefully it becomes a community that everyone's kind of supporting one another. Just one off season of, or off season, just one year of my youngest son doing GPP. And he just started coming back to like lift weights this year. He's 11. 
he looks completely different. Yeah. Just from dragging, carrying, climbing, pull-ups, push like really basic items, yeah, yeah. but consistent basic items. It's amazing how he moves comparatively already. He actually did his first banded front squat session last night. Really? <laughs> yep. <laughs> him and, him, so I use the 35 pound Olympic bar because we have the Alico set. And then a uh, single red and him and Madeline, my freshman a girl, they did uh, four sets of two or four sets of three on front squats against one band last night. That's, That's pretty That's sick. Awesome. It is pretty sick. I, I could tell like uh, my, proud. He's so proud. my daughter's That's at the sick. point where <laughs> she don't really want me to share content that she's that fresh. The freshman sophomore year is a little yeah. weird for it. It was for AG too. And still young enough where he, I, I don't even ask him, but I'm going to put it up. But the way they both move was pretty awesome. And hers is the gymnastics, which is also a GPP yeah. basically. And his with just the year of like, Dustin would train him and his son uh, one day a week, and I would train him one day a week. So they would get the complete, you know, because we train differently. Right, yep. So it's you get both. And so I can already see with him, and he had a PR on bench, 75 pounds. Nice. Did yeah. He flex on him or what? Oh, yeah. He, yeah. He's like, you know, my PR is like 70. I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, I'm like, that's really good. It is really good. Yeah. He yeah. weighs 80. And, and I mean, sure. <laughs> yeah. so anyway, it was, uh, I think that to your point, the basic youth stuff that once again, I haven't been around this stuff because my stuff has been on the internet for so long yeah. that, you know, obviously it's enriching my own family, which is what I want, but I'm seeing the value of this type of content that needs to be out there more because I, re I remember when I finally got the idea of like, and it's probably about the same age, my dad lifted weights, my grandfather lifted weights. If I knew here's a sled in my driveway, drag it up and back, carry some heavy, I would have done it in a heartbeat if yeah. I, you know, if I was able to. So I think I think you're right onto it, dude. Yeah, I think and, it's and good. the amount of you know poor training that's out there, right? I'm not going to be the one to say, hey, that training's poor, but the level of entry to get into our field is minimal. Right? Yeah, you don't need minimal. anything, right? You can yeah. go on a weekend and get a certification. Now all of a sudden you're a strength coach. So well, I didn't even pass the certification, and I had clients. I was already <laughs> getting paid. So <laughs> fuck <you> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I just keep thinking though, like how many just dudes who have no clue what the fuck's going on at like small high schools yeah. are like the strength coaches. Like we didn't even have a strength coach. Yeah. You did. We had like literally had Twitter no workout. Corey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Besides <laughs> that. But like we didn't have anyone to actually look up to who had an experience at like a high level. Yeah. Been around high level fucking athletes that could actually tell us what to do. You know? There you go. Exactly. Which is also like I was talking to, you know, the high school baseball thing that Deegan yeah. mentioned and Todd's at it. There's like a big baseball association. I'm like, I should next year be speaking at that, explaining the band squats, right. having a couple other smart guys with me, and they could go on the app and they could use the program for the whole base. Like I, that, that you're completely right. There's a massive need for that, Cole. Yeah. At all these schools because they're just there's there's no back. There's you're just, just seeing all the strength coaches go up, right? They go from a, a smaller college to a bigger college to maybe the pros. Yep. Where if they work down the other way, it'd be be great, right? Yeah. Just the paycheck's not there. Yeah, but I think the resources need to be more right. digestible and, and more inexpensive, which mine would be. So I think that that's like, that's definitely something that's, you know, kind of been flowing around. And you've been mentioning this for a while because he, he knows there's a big, I was fortunate that our strength coach was an assistant a football coach that had just got out of college playing at Eastern Michigan. Right. So he, when I look back, he still didn't really know, but he knew more than anyone else. Sure. So Dustin and I benefited from that. Yeah. And to this day, we are always very thankful. He's the one that took me to my first powerlifting meet. Yeah. If he doesn't take yeah. me to the first powerlifting meet, I don't even know that exists probably for years later. You know. Yeah. And, I mean, just thinking about, like, let's say someone, you know, does go to school to learn strength and conditioning. They get a job at high school, but they haven't been around high-level guys. And they're just – they're learning and watching what the pros are doing. But the fucking high school kids at a small town in Ohio, yeah. they're not built like genetic freaks like no, these athletes. Uh, like, they need – They don't move they, well yeah, at all. They need the 21 method arm workouts yeah, for real. Yeah. They need that shit. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I would and, – and I'd love to hear your feedback on this because that – to Cole's point, like – on Friday, they, you know, my kids do basically the same program except for we change the Thursdays. On Fridays, I want them to come do arms. Yeah. I think they need to come do a confidence workout where it's not about fucking baseball. Sure. And it's just about looking good for the chicks and like camaraderie. And I don't know if that still happens in like the bigger programs, but I think it maybe should no. at some point, right? I totally agree. Like I said, I work with more female teams. Yeah. I tried to throw a bicep, tricep day out there, and I did not get free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I did it with the golfers. Fill the sleeve. That's what we talk about. We actually oh, call it. We call it. Hey, hey, Danny's like. <laughs> we call it. <laughs> dog soldiers. We want to do. Yeah, fill the collar. I was trying to joke oh. with them because they wear the polo. Like, yeah. Fill the collar, right? 
I mean, That's these guys I fell asleep. Their shirts yeah. look terrible on them, so I'm like, we need to fill these things out a little bit. That or we need to size down to a medium, like Danny. Fill the sleeve. Uh, no you know. So did <laughs> yeah. they did campaign. they respond well to it though? The golfers loved it. Loved it. Well, dude, I think back to my high school weight room session. Yeah. We were all doing the body movement workouts, dude. We were having, we were all doing the twenty methods, shit. having a blast. Yeah, trying to get our veins to pop yeah. out. Our bench sessions, we call them. We like, we'd be going down. We go Hulk smash. And we'd <laughs> do that shit. It was just a blast, and that's honestly like it created a great team culture, exactly. yeah, big time. Yeah. Well, and that's what I've saw with the five or six baseball kids that come asleep. here. And I'm trying to then say we need that more of this going on inside of the actual school, yeah. not just at our gym, yeah. because I think there's a missing component of that with a lot of these teams because they're not in there just hooting and hollering and having fun. It's like, I don't know. The other thing I was going to ask you too was it seems like a lot of these strength guys, are they're so scared to hurt kids yeah. that they don't fucking push them. Yeah. And I'm seeing a lot of that. <laughs> and I don't, and, and I know it, uh, I've talked to like, Baseball strength guys in the pro level, guys making twenty million a year. You're not telling them to take three fifteen for ten reps in the bucket on a back squat, right? Because he, you know, because he's so valuable to the team. Yeah. But if he wants to do that, he'll do it. And that's exactly what the guy told me. I was talking to the guy for the Royals when I spoke to the winter baseball. He said, "Look, this is when Zach Grinky was there. He was a fucking stud. Yeah. He's like Zach Grinky will go three sets of ten, high bar, three fifteen in the bucket. But if I tell the next guy to do that and he gets hurt because he don't want to do it, I'm fucking gone." Yeah. So I get that high school, college. And if guys, kids aren't moving well, I get, don't load them up because sure. they don't know how to deadlift, but I don't know about like, don't you got to fucking push to get better? And, yeah. that, and where is that line? And that's just so tricky, bro. Cause I think that's a lot of why people are drawn to here because they might not be getting pushed in their, whatever school they go to. Right. Yeah. So no, it's, it's definitely a, a tough line to be like, Hey, I got to tell the coach that a kid got hurt today in the weight room. That's never a great feeling, yeah. but they may get hurt on the field too. Right. So yeah, who's it's part of it. that, right. Yeah, it's, it's part true. of it. So you definitely have to be smart about it. So how we did it was we ran a four week wave cycle with a working max and every four weeks basically was a max out week where you okay. hit a one plus or a three plus depending on the exercise. That way you could bump up your working max. So our goal is to continue to get stronger in yeah. season. So you do let the kids eat sometimes. And, you know, if you're fortunate, we had some tendo units, so we were able to use the velocity of the bar, yeah. which was great, where it's like, hey, we want you above a certain, you know, velocity, yeah. which allows the kids, if you're feeling really good some weeks, to eat a little bit. And, what and is the number that you look at? Is it all, is it is it compared to you go kid to kid, or is there like a certain speed the bar has to yeah, go Yeah, so on, on like a max effort lift, it'd be like anywhere from like 0.13 would be like a true max of like okay. speed of the bar to like a 0. 0.20. So anywhere okay. in between that range, if they're hitting like a 0.20, it doesn't look great, maybe shut them down. But yep. if a kid's pretty experienced, his training edge is pretty high, and he's hitting that 0. 0.15, 0. 0.14, he wants to go for it. Take like, another one. Go for it. Sick. Yeah, because Travis Mash brought the gym aware here. Yeah. Yep, and, and, and ran it. It was funny because we were on randomly. It was the Thursday workout. So he got to watch the front squat versus bands, the cleans, and none of these kids knew who he was. Yeah. And he's like, care if I help those guys with the cleans a little yeah. bit and put up the gym aware? I'm like, well, you coach like Olympians. And yeah. Yeah. And so they're seeing the speed on the bar. And so that was like really helpful in their, uh, their actual like product seems relatively easy to use. Very so it's easy. like that, that is uh that's an interesting just cause when Louie was doing 10 unit originally, yeah. some big contraption sure. would that has changed Would they got it on a fucking iPad now. No, they're awesome. I mean, it's, it's just a good way to kind of manage stress throughout the season. Yeah, like, hey, like we're going to stay in between this range your weight can fluctuate week to week. You might be feeling terrible one week, but the next week you're really good. You're moving the weight fast. And I think it's a really good way, especially if you're hitting that point one three. Like those, you know, one rep maxes that look ugly, sometimes they're moving a little bit faster than you think they are. So mm. when you get up, it's like, oh, it was point one five. I probably had a little bit more in the tank. You could go for it. Or you may be like, oh, that felt fast, but it was like a point one seven. You're like, oh, I might shut it down for the day. I'm not feeling that great. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, we're not that scientific, but – I can look at it. I can watch Trey's deadlift and know whether he needs another one or yeah. not. But that's basically but w it would tell you on the printout, hey, yeah. that was slow as shit. Or, you know, <laughs> we some, guys some guys lift slow, though, too. Yeah, we call that the eye tendo. Yeah, I got a lot of that. Yeah, an eye tendo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Cole, it, Cole sometimes I'm, will look back and be like, damn, that was faster than I thought. Yeah, I go off pure speed. Yeah. If it doesn't yeah. feel fast, then I don't really What Joe Bayless do say? He, he only does shit fast. And I'm yeah. the same way. Yeah, Cole... If Cole, uh, no matter how heavy the bar is, it still is, it still has speed to it. Yeah, yeah. Or he doesn't make it. Yeah, 100%. I mean that's basically what it is. So if he makes it, it looks light. If he doesn't make it, he just it just does not go. He's right. not like you're not gonna grind through it really. Yeah. Because even when you made that 360 bench, it was fucking fast. 
Yeah, it was still at fast. right here. It was slow. Yeah, but I mean that was. But if we would have had it on a ten year unit, it probably would have looked like he needed one more. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, mm. huh? Is that because your stretch reflex is really good? I think so. I think just playing sports and stuff like that, mm. everything was super fucking fast, super close. Mm. Like playing football, bench was super close grip, which is so what mm. I do. Loading the bar up and exploding because yeah. that's how you're supposed to hit. Yeah, like that. two way athlete though. Remember? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's why. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. I was three actually. Oh, yeah. what his uh, special teams? <laughs> oh, what? No, oh, two way athlete. I was. What? I played three sports. We know we're saying yeah. offense, oh, defense. Oh, yeah, offense, yeah, defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I was. Uh, I was on every unit, so I was just. You had multiple three then? ways in high school. Hey, I was also. The, <laughs> hey, one game I was also the kicker. People, people forget that <laughs> I, I was the kicker. So I. Th- I was. Did you fucking everywhere. toe blow the fuck out of the ball or what? So all right, so I, I this is totally how I got into the kicker spot. So our kicker was like, dude, he loved kicking, but for some reason, like he just couldn't like make it through or anything like that but you're a place kicker and punter i wasn't punter wasn't punter no i wasn't punter i I couldn't do that but (laughs) dude he he couldn't make a field goal and i'm in in high school you're allowed to wear like the steel toe boot oh that's right yeah yeah. i'm like you're telling me you can't fucking put he was trying to soccer it we don't have a soccer program so he's not like a legit like yeah yeah soccer player i'm like put on that fucking boot and just booty take three steps back and kick it in the straight line do you do it like 1960s field goals yeah i was kicking like 40 yards with that (laughs) I was like, this is fucking OP. So then I started OP. doing, yeah. So then I started doing kickoff. But the thing was, so I only did it. Your for like big ass is out there doing kickoff. Yeah, I was bro. a kicker, dude. It was, dude. It was so funny because like my homies were playing like the, you know, whatever, like right beside me, and I just like look at him like, all right, you ready? And I'd start laughing and shit like that while I was kicking off. But That's I only did it epic. for like two weeks because actually there was like one practice where I kicked the ball and like fucked with my quad. Yeah. So I was, tr- I wasn't really trying to keep doing that. But then also, I wore the Under Armour cleats that went up to your ankles, mm-hmm. and it was a pain in the ass to get on oh, and off because yeah. the boot wouldn't go onto the oh. cleat. Two, so. two kick. You know that Pe- you know Peters kick. did that in the NFL game, right? Yeah, he tore his quad. He tore his quad. So the, it was uh, basically he didn't practice one time, and and you got to figure if Peters kicks the ball like to the end zone, he's an extra linebacker running down, not a kicker running down. So they they came up with that uh, strategy. And he, I don't know if it was the second time that game he kicked it. He might have got one in and the second time. He tore his fucking quad off. Jeez. That yeah. sucks. Yeah. And so it was like, but I mean, it was like an epic type of like strategy. Oh, but yeah. he never got a chance to really experience it Damn. too long because he only did it once or twice. I used <laughs> yeah. to really vibe with the dudes to just take their shoe off. Mm. Like, did you ever see like them old school kickers? I've no. seen that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, they, so it'd be snowing out. 1975, yeah. guy be out there with no shoe on. Soccer kicking and well, fucking... You, That's epic. You know, it's funny. I actually saw a video like how they came up with steel toe boot okay. was because one of the first field goal kickers in like the NFL, he didn't have any fucking toes. Yeah, it was that Dempsey. Uh, yeah. Dempsey. yeah, and he kicked yeah, like yeah. a sixty-five he yard did. or something with yeah. that toe, the steel toe thing on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So if I was a kicker, I'd go. Amazing. I'd go. No shit. If I if I could go back, I wish like someone would have told me to go for long snapping. I feel like would have been legit been. long. Well, because you're because those know. guys are all like. Like two thirty, two like you could you know you could two fifty. I think I yeah I could have weaseled my way in for yeah, sure. That's I why I told that. my brother. Dude, to do but it, yeah. honestly, so good I was too. also the field. I was the long snapper. Yeah, I hated it. I wasn't that consistent with it because <laughs> honestly, my shoulder pads <laughs> and my like my neck's neck like, roll. Yeah, my neck's like too big and it's like short. So I'd get down there and try to snap the ball. I couldn't fucking. You're like, an, arm- it, it, you're it like an, arm- yeah. you're like an armadillo trying to snap <laughs> the fucking football. Literally, yeah, I look like a rhino trying to snap a football and shit. Yeah, it, it is harder rough. than it looks with the shoulder pads and helmet on. I mean, his sure. brother got a scholarship to do that. Yeah, I yeah, started yeah, Miami. I started snapping my like junior year or end of sophomore year, or whatever, and so I. I, when I took it over, and then I'm like, oh, my God, you have to fucking do this shit now. Dude, he was like in eighth grade. I'm like, you're going to get a scholarship. Yeah. You're and your brother's big enough, too. Yeah, so he was throwing bullets, and then he, lo and behold. Dude, I'm telling you, I was like, I was about to choke out. I was about to pass out, and sometimes he would <laughs> sit back there and wait. Like, he would wait, and I'm, so I'm sitting here choking myself. By the time I go to snap, I'm about to black out. It was rough. <laughs> Cole's choking his chicken, fucking yeah. trying to snap the ball. <laughs> Some WWE choke. Amazing. Yeah, but you know what? I was a team player. Wherever the wherever the team needed me, I was there. If you want to choke me, it's cool. Whatever. I, <laughs> hey, did you lead? Did you lead very many like huddles? Like, were you the guy that was? Yeah, like, I was the fuck. I was. The, I was the captain. Of course, you had to yeah. be the hype man. <laughs> yeah, hype man. Dude, I'm telling you, like the locker rocker. I, we were legit, lo- like headbutting, like headbutting lockers I before weight room shit like that. Yeah. Oh, that. Uh, this is. Um, Peter said that Cushing's coming in town. Ooh. And I'm gonna try to snag him for the show. 
That'd be one. That'd that be would a be a juicy one. one. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's known for headbutting people. Head without dude, he, hang, he's like the yeah. ultimate headbutt guy. He yeah. has the fucking that picture YouTube of him video. correct. That shit. That yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. That'd be sick. Um, all right, Colin, back to you. We're, we don't do this very often, but I think we should. Why don't you ask everybody one question? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> We're putting you on the spot. I have, yeah. a, I have a cause you're, cause you're, too. cause you're getting, cause you're getting good at uh, podcasting now. So I figured yeah. it would be good. Go ahead, Danny. Shut up. You're really good at podcasting. No, I just, yeah. my, uh, my curiosity is peaked. I, I, I just wonder <laughs> what your, uh, what, what your <laughs> favorite bicep or tricep exercise is, or do you have a preference? Uh, Easy one for both of my go rep progression. Oh, Dude, it is, it is, that like, is that was not scripted, really is, man. Not scripted. So good. Really that rep progression yeah. is so good. Wow. Yeah, Instant juice. Um, one question for each guy. Camera work that you do. How, how did you get into it, and what kind of the upsides, and where do you see it going? Like, I, I, everyone wants a vlogger now or a camera person. Um, so how I got into it, it's kind of a funny story. Um, <laughs> shout so out I, Kyle. Yeah, shout out Kyle, actually. <laughs> so um, <laughs> <laughs> I love I love yeah. when this comes I up. I love this story. Because yeah. it ended Kyle's good. Always Kyle, too. yeah, of Kyle's course. like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle's like, I fucking hate this story. Dude. <laughs> All right, anyways, okay. um, yeah, so Kyle was recording for Corey in the morning, like how I do now. And Kyle couldn't wake up in the morning to come to the gym. <laughs> and so this was like four years ago now when I moved down here. Corey told me I could come intern at Max Effort. So I came down here, interned at Max Effort, started going to the 4 a.m. crew. And Kyle couldn't show up in the morning. And I was like, this is an opportunity, I think, you know, that could be like a way to get myself into the system. And so I started bringing my camera to the gym. And one morning when Kyle didn't show up, I was like, yeah, I got my camera G. Like, he's like fired up. Let's then, rock. Yeah. And then the rest is history. Yeah, that was it. So and it, and it still it turned out good because Kyle came back into the fold and has done yeah. a great job. But it probably hurts a little bit when he hears a story. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle hears a story. Yeah. It's all good. And, but so how I got into it, though, like I had that was how I got into it. Like I had no photography skills or videography whatsoever like i learned everything on youtube like as i literally started He's doing like, it yeah like i'm googling yeah. or i'm on youtube like how to take better pictures like super basic shit like that so that's like how i got into it and how i learned and then like kind of where i see it going um i think like where i see it going is there's going to be a lot more people that are just into it because content is king i think at the end of the day like everybody needs content and I think that higher quality content, like content that doesn't come from an iPhone at the end of the day is like something that is always noticed, yep. especially on social media. It sticks out like a sore thumb, in my opinion, like not saying an iPhone camera an iPhone quality is not good because that shit's amazing nowadays. Mm -hmm. But like there's a difference, though, when you're using like a mirrorless camera, DSLR yeah. or something professional. Bro, when you see the, the pictures that any three of you guys take, including Cole, too. It's like you can see the quality difference that we're operating with, yeah. right? And it's normal here, but then when we go to operate with other people and we see, like, they're not capturing things the way that we're capturing, yeah. like, it's just the norm that I get a Google thing, that we all have access to these high-quality things, that Kyle's here doing this right now. Like, that's how it always looked in my head. Yeah. We ended yeah. up with two really good guys that can do similar things, and it's like... Um, what I told both of these guys specifically, and now it's even uh, with Danny too, with all the stuff that he understands from the email and, and websites, like as they're building their own brands, the skills that they learned within this system, now they're starting to, because look, he was basically forced to do it every day, as was goal, as was Danny, and they became great at it. Yeah. I mean, they kill everybody in my, in my opinion, especially with the speed factor. Yeah. So it's like, it, you can already see the value that, accidentally when these guys work on projects for themselves they kill everybody because yeah. they already have so many reps that's awesome you know what i mean so awesome. it's, it's pretty wild yeah and i just think like content though is like something that everybody needs to like kind of like yep. make more of because like it's super it's gonna be super cool then like you think like look back five ten years from now you're gonna be able Huge. to go through folders and pick out oh january 20th 2023 yes. Here's the picture. We just talked about this like, morning. Me and there's, the, there's the glog from that day. Oh, I benched this that day. I squatted that that day. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's going to be super cool, I think, like, one day to look back at all that kind of shit. And it just is, like, cool now just to have that documentation because, like, you can – there's so many, there's so many like, purposes that you can use with it on social media. It's just, like, a matter of doing it for a lot of people. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. awesome. I think you guys do a good job, too. It's not content creation. I think it's content documentation. You're just yeah. documenting what you guys do, which is authentic. And that's yeah. what you guys love about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cole, for you, I want to know more about the Twitter space for you and all the Bulldogs and all that stuff that you've been doing. Where does that come from? Bulldogs. Where do you see that going? Mm, okay, well, this is uh, – all right. 
I'll are you break. like the are you like the mass mortal though of the bulldog? Like, do people know? No, no one. Okay, is, okay. I'm gonna keep it. So this okay. is an exclusive. Like, every, listeners are uh, alpha. And they're gonna find out. But all right, alpha. so let's start out with the bulldog thing. So obviously, Bruce the bulldog. He's a massive role in Varsity Creative, um, which we made this mascot originally because me and Trey were partnering up because we didn't think we were gonna be working here anymore at one point. So we're like, we need to team up and go create our own oh, stuff. Yeah. So Bruce is. I love fucking bulldogs. My brother had Bulldogs literally growing up my entire life. He has two of them now. I don't have one yet because I don't have the space. But, uh, yeah, I just – I love Bulldogs. I think I literally am a living Bulldog. I think in a you know previous life or hopefully when I'm gone, I come back previous as a Bulldog. Um, but, yeah, so I, I got Bruce, and I just had this idea of just searching, like, on web domains. Like, is there anything that's Bulldog-related that's not, like, taken yet? And my bulldog, D A W G dot com was so available. Good. Immediately snagged it. Instagram's free, Twitter's free, TikTok, all the of it. The brand is created. The brand's already done. The branding's already done. So I basically, you know, in my free time while I'm at home, I'm just chilling uh, on Instagram watching like bulldog videos. And literally, I just made my like own page of these like pages I was watching. So now on TikTok, I have uh, my bulldog doc, or at my bulldog. So. Go follow it. Shout out. 50 racks. 50 fucking followers in two weeks. Or, or, or 50,000 50, 50, 50, followers yeah. in two weeks. <laughs> Sign up for so, the newsletter. Yeah. So me, so <laughs> me, hey, I would argue. Listen, I'm going to yeah. shout. Like, you and Trey have blown up on social media yeah, officially. Yeah. yeah. It's, so. <laughs> I fucking love that. Now it's You cool. are a bulldog influencer. And you are a fucking Web3 influencer. Literally. So, yeah. So, go follow the account. Um, basically, I'm just uploading, you know, bulldog videos, which I love. But now I'm trying to create the ultimate bulldog lovers community because for bulldog people, you know, it's a it's a super cultish thing. Like yep. if you love bulldogs, you're about them. There's no like one stop shop that's like this is a bulldog. This is for bulldog people by bulldog people. But I'm trying to fucking create that. Uh, Bruce you is are. leading the way. We got 50k followers on TikTok. So we good. got the website built up. We got a Facebook group that I'm gonna try to funnel into, create the community. And now I'm going to basically try to make like products for bulldogs. Can you get a iced out gold bulldog chain, chain whenever shit hits? Do 100%. So actually, okay. so please, that's the can thing. Can you so, please do that? For yeah, me. actually, like I literally uh, bought my brother's bulldogs, like gold chains and like sunglasses and shit like that for them to wear. My goal is to eventually, because I want to get a bulldog within like the next year or two. Once I mean, you're basically going to have to. Yeah. Yeah, I want one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And here's the thing. Like you may think like this bulldog thing's a whole craze. I'm a fucking I'm <laughs> a, I'm, a, I'm allergic to bulldogs and I love them so much. So imagine all the people who are like die hard like bulldog guys. Mm -hmm. You know and stuff like that. So, you know, there's you know, they need wrinkle cream. So I'm like I'm going to try to develop products to keep the bulldog safe so and try to create the toys that bulldogs need cuz they need good ones because they'll fucking chew through shit. So they need some nice and you're toys. You're building the community, bro. Yeah, and bulldog people, you know, I'm I'm gonna try to make like to where you can like print out like the bulldog, you know, face like make like a wrap cover and get it as a T-shirt like e everything bulldog related. That's what I'm trying to make. So <laughs> once again, I see like what you're doing, what Trey's doing. It's like when the NFT project drops, Trey's the influencer. Yeah, you're you're gonna have a whole brand around the bulldog. You're the influencer. Or your account is. It's like. That's the same well, model, bro. It's, it's awesome because it all works together in the ecosystem. You know what For I mean? Sure. Like that brand just goes to show that like Varsity Creative is more than just a creative agency. Like it's everything it's else. It's yeah. a consumer product. You're proving it's a collectible. It right now. It's everything like that. So I think it's going to be really cool. So when the NFTs are like 10 racks a piece, holla at your really? boy. Yeah. And then you I know, might sell one. Hopefully, motherfuckers buy the Bulldogs, and then you you know you get the NFT, you can get my Bulldog stuff for free. Cause shout out to the homies, you know, yeah. it's, it's all about that. <laughs> yeah, it's all creating your own utility. Literally. Well, that. here's the thing. I always come back to this. Keep like, telling me, Cole. Uh, well, I always come back to this. I love designing shit, and I love making clothes because I'm wearing my own shit. Michaela oh, yeah. like always makes fun of me because all I wear is Max Effort, all I wear is our stuff. Yeah. But I'm like, I want to have my whole fucking closet. Yeah, if it's, I'm only wearing shit I made. Yeah. You know what I mean, like that. And whenever I get a bulldog, I only want to use shit for my bulldog that I made because I trust Fuck in it. Yeah. And I know it's fucking good. Fuck yeah. So that's where Dude, I'm at. I felt the same way about supplements. Yeah, that's that's what I'm I saying. I was like, if I'm taking pre workout, I want it to be my pre workout. <laughs> exactly. My fucking protein. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Cause, yeah, because you care about that shit so much. Exactly. You know what you need. You got it, Cole. I'm about that life. So I'm about, I'm that, about life. that life for you, about that life. <laughs> yeah, we're all about that life. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? 
You can tell he's passionate he's about passionate it. He's passionate. Yeah. So <laughs> he bad. likes Bulldogs. That's yeah. where yeah. the whole Bulldog thing is going to. No, that's awesome. And I'm waiting to get a Bulldog because their lifespan's so limited. And I want to make sure that they can live like a quality life, like honestly, hmm. because they already have like health like yeah, issues yeah. to begin with. You already know that, which is another reason why Bulldog people will spend money on Bulldogs because mm-hmm. they need to. Um, so I just, I want them to have like more space. Your so. Bulldog's going to be like a red carpet Bulldog. Bro. Yeah. I already have a name for him. So we got Bruce right here. And the great thing about Bruce is, is that a lot of people make Bulldog accounts, but it's just a fact Bulldogs are going to pass away sometime. Bruce, Bru- never Bruce will never away. die. Yeah, he's, he's, like, he's a Bart living legend. He's like Bart forever. Simpson. Legend. Living <laughs> legend forever. Yeah. So that's amazing. That'd be cool. But I'm gonna name him Brock. All right. Yeah. I Fuck love yeah. that. Great explanation, <laughs> Cole. Yeah. Danny, for amazing. you, um, I know the Ruck community is something that you've kind of you know, leaned into a little bit. Why, why that community, and and what does it mean to you? That's yeah. That's a good question. Uh, my one of my best friends is the one who got me into it back in like 2014, and. Uh, so I bought my first ruck in 2014, did my first event, and I kind of fast forward, of, of, you know, several years because I just did the one event and that was it, and then I just went back to what I was doing or whatever. But then I got reintroduced it again, and for whatever reason, it kind of like took over from there. Um, for me, uh, you know, I'm I kind of stay in my my shell. I'm a lot better now, but. Uh, yeah, you I, think Arms Army General? Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but for me, like the the camaraderie of being on a team, and I I liked specifically going to an event that I didn't know anybody sometimes because it forced me to have to talk to people. That's cool. Um, because like there's one, for example, that uh, one of the events was here in Columbus, and it was a small team, like less than ten people or something like that. But we, I didn't know a single person on there, but the whole uh, whole event was based around team-based stuff. So you had to accompli- or, uh, accomplish, you know, this mission, get from point A to point B. You got to carry all this shit. We have this many, like, casualties, blah, 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 figure it out. So, um, and then you each had a turn of being, like, the team leader and, like, coordinating stuff and everything like that. So as far as, like, personal development, that was a huge draw to me. Um, and I saw myself evolve. Um, over the course of these different events and moving up in their tiers as far as difficulty goes. And then that kind of snowballed into where I am now today, whereas I have, like, the – I guess it's, like, similar to how, like, David Goggins talks about, like, he's more interested in, like, the mental side of when he's working out than purely the physical. So that's where I I like to kind of, you know, find ways to um, expand those horizons by – doing the stuff I really, you know, don't want to do. So like getting up early when it's windy, when it's fucking cold, when it's raining, um, or just throwing myself into an event, uh, that I'm not sure if I'm going to really make it or not, which I haven't made some of the events. So I know I'm on the right track. Um, cause it's really hard to kind of replicate, um, damn near impossible to replicate the feeling of being in that, that dark hole, dark spot. So, um, I don't even know if that really answers no, your question. Does, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But now, dark sh- hole, dark spot. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> I do. Sh- shout out holes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, but now, even like fucking like Jake Holland, for example, he's all about rucking. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. really looked forward to uh, doing those rucks with you on the weekend. I know. Yeah. Trebway rucked yesterday. Did right? he? Yeah. yeah. Shout out Trebway. Um, yeah, he was asking me what shoes to wear. <laughs> it yeah, was amazing. That's sick. Yeah. Did so, but I mean, it's just you know, it's such a basic, is you know human need of like just fucking walking with some weight you know it's so like you know almost just primal so it's gonna make everything just feel better um i mean jake broke the fucking world record for lunges yeah Yeah. he said that played a part with how everything was you know connected and you know staying loose and everything yo i'm just curious like these like rucking groups is there any way we can make like an arms army like rucking group (laughs) arms army like literally led by general small maybe yeah maybe like we like put I mean, on put together pe- a rucking event. People would definitely join that event. The rucking, <laughs> no with sleeves, the arms thrown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. basically make like our own like triathlon where it's like you come in, you start out, you hit an arm workout, <laughs> then you go ruck, and then you have to go lunge. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like mile, a hundred barbell curls, mile, yeah. <laughs> you know, Dude. and then some skull isometric or uh, five pound curls for a mile. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, <laughs> cur- curl while you walk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That'd be sick. Well said, Danny. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, so. that's awesome. Really cool. Yeah, so it's uh, I definitely recommend it. I yeah. mean, it's it's kind of a good thing now too, because going into having a kid now, she's you know, she just passed the one year mark. It's like a just like an added bonus that we can do that all together. Yeah, and that's it's super cool. you know all I have to do is throw my ruck on. Yeah, and uh, you know, and the weight is a great equalizer too. It make you a little little bitch real quick. Yeah, mm. you know, carrying twenty pounds versus seventy five pounds is a completely different story, as you know. Um, you know, so build yourself a thick neck, Cole. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, we talked about on the last podcast, having a huge neck just, you know, it, you know, screams confidence. Yeah. February 10th, Zach Boren's, uh, you know, first team all neck and knowledge bomb comes out. <laughs> Stay tuned. So yeah. on the exclusive on the Corgi Fitness app. It's probably one of the best knowledge bombs we did. That's, I mean, there's like fucking real. 500 of them, so that's funny. Yeah. It gives you two exercises, too. So Two supersets. Yeah. I tried what, them both. Yeah. L- immediately felt like my neck grew. Like When I said know. we still had a neck machine, his eyes lit up like, for real? Yeah. <laughs> Those cool ones. That was funny. That's sick. All right. What do you got for me, Colin? Um, for you, it's kind of a two-part question. Mm-hmm. Um, why the name Max Effort, and what does it mean to you? Yeah, so... I would say probably one of the hardest things when you're creating a brand, right? Especially coming off of Muscle Farm. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of things right with that brand. So I'm looking at a lot of things on like, okay, that did what it did. I can't try to replay that again because it's impossible. Um, But what can I do that's, what can I make that's extremely authentic to me that, and if I have to be really honest, what I created the first time was not my intention all the way. What I'm creating now with these guys in max effort was what I was attempting to create the first time. Mm -hmm. It just with my other business partner having like the NFL background with his marketing experience and just ideas, it shifted there. Right. And then I just supported it and then had my version with all the workouts and whatever. And so if I really think about, it started looking very, it really different early on because it didn't have, it didn't look like Nike. It became that over right. time, right? So then when I start again, I go, all right, what are some of the terms? I literally had a whiteboard or I was on my notes section. What are some of the terms that I either live by, identify with, they're involved in my life that could then be across all platforms, sports, life? This this is really my complete exact thought process. So I was like, you know, thinking about the methods and maximum max effort method, obviously with the conjugate method that we use all the time. And I started thinking like max effort, max effort. Then I added muscle in it. So it had like some association obviously with uh, lifting and I couldn't believe this fucking available. Like literally. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like literally perfect. Now I always thought the muscle would be part of it, right? And even in the initial logo, but people locked onto just max effort itself to your point of what it means is it means the same thing to everybody. Now there's degrees of max effort right. of what will the people are willing to do to David Goggins, to the person that doesn't know how to squat. But the reality is you can give maximum effort in life, tennis, polo, it, it doesn't matter. Everyone knows what that's supposed to mean. So my thing was, is it, I thought it really made sense in my lifestyle, the authenticity of old school gym and what I've been preaching since I had a platform, which is about 2010, right? That I'm a guy that puts out this type of effort on a regular basis. I'm not that gifted. And this is why I've had these results. And I thought that it would mean something when people were wearing it. I wanted, I I love the feeling of initially when I had my first West side sweatshirt that you know because you couldn't buy that stuff back then so i in 2008 or whatever i go up there and louis throws me the sweatshirt and i still have it i wear it today it doesn't even have the logo on the front it's only on the back and the sleeve hit so it's like og og yeah. and i remember like when i wasn't at west side and i'd put that on how i would feel i got to give what i know is the west side effort like meaning like the intensity sure that then started the shift towards i think when people would come to old school in the original one that was open to the public and they would feel it and they would buy it. They'd take it back to their lifetime fitness and go, I'm doing the squat every day. I got my hoodie up. I'm wearing old school. Like it started. So I thought to myself, like, I want that hopefully within our gear. I thought gear was going to be a big part of what we do, which it is. Yeah. And that when people put it on, that it means something, whether it's reminding them to give max effort or what it represents from here. 
Colin Moore said this to me, which Colin Moore is one of our wrestlers, USA team, you know, that Dustin trains. He says, when I see somebody on campus wearing max effort, I automatically think that they're tough because it's like a band that if you know, you know, yeah. and, and I'm okay with that because yeah. I like that in the circles of the Schlegels of the world, Peter's like that they know, right. And, and coach storms and some of these guys are really getting behind us now. Uh, it really means a lot because it is an actual authentic, often, you know, authentic brand. So that's really what was my mind, you know, kind of process. I wrote all these terms down and I had to fight <clears throat> one trademark. It was for max muscle, which is like a, it's like a supplement, actual chain store. Um, and somehow they let mine through with the max effort muscle. And yeah, that's kind of, kind of, I think people were even surprised that I, that it was available, yeah. you know, cause it's very, very saturated. So yeah. it was tough, but, um, I really didn't have a good second to yep. be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. And I was trying my best not to look like I was attempting to rip off what I already did. Cause it wouldn't have worked. Yeah. I, last night I went to Applebee's got in late, whatever I get there, get my deal. My server goes, Love the sweatshirt. I was like, oh, I'm in the community. I, like, <laughs> yeah, cool. I fuck with that. It was that's cool. Awesome. <laughs> nah, it's real cool. So, yeah, the, but the, the process and the meaning, and I would argue it's really difficult to have multiple good brands. I'm thankful that I feel like we have three, yeah. right? And then Cole's created his, his own, him and Trey, that's going to then go do great things too. It's like brands that are coming out of here, um, or, you know, they, they mean something. Yep. I think they look a certain way. And I'm super proud about that because Muscle Farm was a hard act to follow. Maybe not in some of the degenerate shit that I yeah. talk about, but from what the perception of the brand was, yeah. it's really good, man. Yeah. And I believe that if we were spending $30 million behind this, it probably would do similar things like that. Yeah. That's not what I want for this brand. If that happens, then great. But the reality is I think it has the same type of pop. Yeah. So it's pretty Love cool. It. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, all right, we can wrap it up there, huh? Uh, where okay. can everybody find you at, Colin? Uh, Instagram is the number one platform for me at cm1 underscore performance. And then in my link tree, I got all my other social medias linked there. Cool, glad to have you on here, man. It was Appreciate awesome. Appreciate you having me, guys. Roundtable podcast. I'm your boy Corey G. Small Arms Danny at Trey Speed and the Graphic Gangster himself, Cole Susak. We are out.